Good afternoon, good evening, students. I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're back with another lecture concerning linguistics for first year students. This is the eighth part, and it is the last one. It will be about American structuralism. So, today's lecture, of course, is going to be, let's say, an introduction to American structuralism. We have already introduced the European structuralism. Today, we are going to introduce American structuralism. But this won't be, let's say, a detailed lecture because as first-year students, you ought to know uh, what do we mean by structuralism in general and American and the difference between American and European structuralism. Anyways, before I start, as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified and also subscribe to the channel in case it's not already done. That would encourage me to do more, of course, and it'll help you out during the period of exams. Without any further ado, we shall start with American structuralism. So when we talk about American structuralism, we have the word Amerindians. The Amerindians are American tribes, existed in the New World or America long before the arrival of the 13 colonies. So these Indians had, of course, their own language to communicate. So, American structuralism was inrooted or started with those languages because English was already des described in uh, Britain because that's the, let's say, the source of the language. Um, and of course, that was in Europe, and we already dealt with, we have already dealt with um, the European structuralism. Now, you should keep in mind the word Amerindians. Now, American structuralism is grounded or inrooted we can say started in anthropology. So American anthropologists studied the different cultures of the Amerindian tribes until they developed structural ideas of the study of language. In other words, the American anthropologists did not, let's say, did not aim to study the language or the language of the um, these American tribes or Amerind Amerindians, sorry, not Americans, Amerindian tribes. So, since they were studying the culture, and of course culture involves also language. So, these anthropologists were studying the different cultures between these tribes until they found themselves studying language. So, they developed a structural ideas of the study of language. So, this is how American structuralism started. It is grounded or inrooted in anthropology. Through anthropology, we developed the study of language. This is how American structuralism started. Now, the Amerindian languages did not have written records, so the historical aspect of language study was neglected or, can say, discarded. In other words, of course, the languages that were spoken between the Amerindian tribes were not written. For example, if you take English, or you take, you take French, you take Italian, Spanish, um, mostly the, um, the languages that were spoken in Europe, they were written. Okay? So, we had, let's say, um, a reliable source of the fixed system of language. So, it is easy to understand or to study language in Europe. But here, the Amerindian, or the Amerindians, did not write their language. The Amerindian languages were only spoken. If you remember, the European structuralism focused on the written form and not the spoken form, just like Saussure's dichotomies. Um, one of those dichotomies says that we, or Saussure, suggested that um, structuralists should study language, or what we call in French, long, because it is fixed in the mind, it is a system that doesn't change from time to time. Whereas Paul is the articulation, is the realization of the language itself. But here there is a problem because when you realize or you produce language, it is different from an individual to another. So here is the difference, the main difference between European and American structuralism. European structuralism focused on the let's say, the written form of language, because it was written, it was recorded, but the Amerindian languages were not written. So here, the anthropologists or the structuralists, I mean, those anthropologists who became later on structuralists as well, they focus on the spoken form, because they did not have a choice. 
the language of the Amerindians was not written. So, American structuralists focused on describing the structure of the Amerindian languages by studying the spoken form. Now, you might ask, how did they study the spoken form? Like I said, we have the word Amerindians. They did not write their language. Of course, the American structuralists, they recorded. They, they took um, recording tapes. So they went to speak or to communicate with those uh, people or the, the, the let's say the uh, members of the tribes. So they were uh, they went to communicate with them in order to push them to talk, and they recorded the language. It's a tape. Then what did they do? They collected those recordings. Then they analyzed those uh, let's say uh, words, those sentences. Uh, I mean every uh, single utterance, and of course. At the end they describe them so this is what we mean by American structuralism one thing in common between European structuralism and American structuralism is the fact that they focused on form and neglected meaning so this is as far as American structuralism is concerned of course, we have some American uh, structuralists I can give you two but we have many others of course uh, who left their impression, of course, their impact uh, in the American structuralism. We have, for example, Edward Sapir, who was born in 1884 and died in 1939. We have um, uh, Leonard Bloomfield. He's an American uh, or U.S. linguist. He's very famous for also the hypothesis of ICA, immediate constituent analysis. Uh, I have already made videos about that as well. You can check them. And, um, of course, we have uh, Edward Sapir who wrote or who uh, developed the hypothesis of determinism or relativism, which means language determines your thought. So this is as far as American structuralism is concerned. If you have any kind of question, I would be glad to answer them. Just um, leave, leave your questions in the comments below. Otherwise, contact me on the Facebook page. Um, do not forget to share with your friends. And also subscribe if it's not already done. I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.